so good morning everyone and good afternoon to all of our um of all participants attending this attending this webinar it is a pleasure to have you all with us um and um, and many thanks for for registering and i hope that this webinar is fruitful for your all your business activities my name is vasco barros i'm an international consultant at spi a portuguese consultancy company um, um founded in uh, 1996 um, and uh, I will be uh, making uh, will be the moderator for today's webinar, uh, and I will be also representing the Cuban project uh, as the main organizer of the event in collaboration with the Global Cosmetic Cluster. Um, this welcome session and opening remarks will also be done uh, by Ségolène Lelotre from the Global Cluster uh, Cosmetic Cluster Europe, um, which uh, she will better present. Uh, later on in this session. So uh, once again, uh, many thanks for joining. Uh, as you know, this webinar uh, is focused on the expanding to South Korea, exploring the dynamics uh, and innovation culture of this market. So just giving um, a, a very initial uh, understanding of what Cubin is um, and how we can support uh, how we can support your business activities. Cubin stands for Cultural Understanding for Business Expansion and Innovation. The main aim of the Cubin platform is to provide um, relevant tools for to better prepare the European stakeholders in doing their business uh, in different uh, emerging markets and unfamiliar business uh, ecosystems. Uh, the platform focuses on a selection of emerging economies which are available um, on the website um, and which have been defined um, um, in the um, in the scope of the um, of the activities, um, this um, this platform has different tools highlighted um, uh, among quizzes where you can test yourself uh, and see how better prepared you are um, for the market. Um, you can you have uh, different library documents which include information um, in different levels um, of knowledge of the market. So uh, more culture wise and more innovation wise to different levels uh, and, and depths. And we also have a set of webinars as this example here, uh, where you can attend uh, and participate and ask questions to our network of speakers. Of course, our platform is also open to ask any questions uh, to, our, to our network of partners um, and, and experts, and we are always open uh, to reply to your, to your um, inquiries. We also have our social media channels um, from Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, we are uh, posting a regular um, uh, information uh, and documents and quizzes uh, in our channel. So please also stay tuned for this. Of course, we also have our subscribe, uh, our mailing list where you can get the regular newsletters of, of our updates um, and content. Regarding today's uh, webinar, um, uh, as referred, uh, it aims to focus uh, on the South Korean market. We will have two uh, keynote speakers for this session. I will also very briefly present them as they will, uh, I believe, as well present them uh, themselves. But we will have as the first speaker, um, Alex Yu, uh, who is an executive coach and organizational development consultant who focuses primarily uh, on the global leadership development, uh, executive team development, um, and so on. Um, Alex is an ICF professional certified coach uh, and a Korean Facilitators Association Certified Professional Facilitator. Um, she is also an associate partner of Offset Insights, who is the coordinator um, of the project Cubin. Uh, as a second speaker um, and, and giving a, a presentation um, of, a, I would say, a success case, we have Sylvain Gleises, which is a Chief Commercial and Marketing Office, uh, Officer at the Martidem Group. Um, and Marty Dem Group is a dermostatic laboratory originating from the pharmacy in Barcelona specialized in master formulas. So this will be also, they will better present themselves in their, in their session. Um, I would also would like to take the opportunity in this presentation um, to just very quickly showcase and present um, an event from a, a collaboration project uh, of Cuban, which is the InnoWide project the InnoWide um, project uh, supports um, SMEs in developing viability studies uh, into different markets, and they are coming to a close um, uh, their close event um, uh, tomorrow. So the event is taking place tomorrow, um, and they are organizing the final event, which will present um, the main um, uh, the main uh, the program scope, the goals, uh, the results, and achievements uh, from the project. But also, we'll have a section dedicated to the promotion of relevant initiatives um, that support SM European SMEs into other markets. Uh, in this case, as you can see from the, the session uh, uh, at 12, 
uh, 05CT. We will have a presentation from Egbert Scrum, from a CEO from Hofstede Insights, who will also present better um, the Cuban and how Cuban can support in your activities. Um, you have the details here and the presentation will also be shared at the end of the session, but nevertheless, you already have the information here uh, in case you would like to register. The event, as I said, um, is, is tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So I would like now to give the floor to um, uh, Ségolène Lelotre for a presentation of the Global Comestic Cluster. Please, Ségolène. Thank you. Well, I'm Ségolène Lelotre from Cosmetic Ballet France, the coordinator of Global Cosmetic Cluster Europe. Uh, so let me present to you globally what is Global Cosmetic Cluster at an international level before talking about the European level. Um, we have founded this association in 2016 it gathered 18 clusters, cosmetics clusters of the whole value chain uh, worldwide in 15, 16 countries. The idea, the objectives of this uh, association is of course to be the gateway for SMEs, for cosmetic company to enter, to facilitate the, the access to the markets, to give contents, to help them to, to enter the cosmetic market. It's also to be the international reference for cosmetic expertise since we are gathering thousands of companies in the whole value chain. So it's always of interest to know that you can contact us in order to find an expertise in a place or another. And also, of course, to share experience, contents, market studies, etc., within this uh, association. So it's cluster gathering information and sharing it to their members. If we're going to the European level, this, uh, so if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, the Global Cosmetic Cluster Europe uh, project is co-funded by the EU Commission, the COSME program. It gathers six partners from Spain, Portugal, Italy, Romania, Turkey, and France. And the idea is to build, uh, well, to, we, we have built an acceleration program in order to boost the SME's internationalization uh, business opportunity towards five different markets, India, Mexico, South Korea, Emirates, and USA. So today we are going to talk about Korea, of course, South Korea, but we are working on those five countries in order to bring the SMEs uh, toward those markets, giving them marketing intelligence. So it's free uh, market studies, uh, market data and everything. So you can just contact us to get that. Uh, it's to bring also giving the opportunity to, to have training on internationalization. We are organizing also mission to those five markets and helping companies to find the different fundings in order to, to bring them to those countries. So it's completely complementary to Cuban information. That's why we wanted to share this uh, webinar together. And I'm glad to, to propose you in partnership with Cuban this webinar. So. Enjoy this moment and don't hesitate to contact us for any any question, any question. Thanks. Thank you, Sigalin. And yes, it's also a pleasure to co-organize this, this webinar with you and, and, and for joining forces for such an interesting topic to our participants and also an, an interesting, I believe, market uh, for many of our stakeholders. So without further ado, and moving already straight away to the first, uh, first presentation, um, I would like to give the floor uh, to Alex Yu. Um, she will give us better insights on how to do uh, business with, in South Korea. Please, Alex, go ahead. You're, you're on mute. If you could just unmute. Yes. Thank you, Vasco. So let me share my slides. Okay, so hello from Seoul, Korea. Alex has introduced, and it is my pleasure and honor to introduce my culture South Korea to you this evening time in Korea right now. So we have, you know, limited 25 minutes to introduce Korea. So I will present at the speed of, uh, at, at, at the, you know, the Korean speed of Bali Bali. So if you know what this means, it means quick, quick, hurry, hurry. So I try to you know, balance my efficiency with effectiveness, but please excuse if I speak a little bit too fast and if I you know, just quickly go through the slides. 
and we are going to have Q and A session. So at the end, you know that I can accommodate to some of your questions. So the structure of these twenty five minutes is that first, I'm really interested, you know, that what's your impression of Korea or Korean culture. So we'll do quick menti poll, and then I'm just going to focus on three aspects of Korea that I think you know is interesting for you to understand to to do business with Koreans. And first thing first, so please, you know, that uh, proud your, your mobile, or you can, you can just, you know, you know, use on your computer, go to menti.com and use the code 504404641. And there, you know, that you can see the question that what comes to your mind when you hear Korea, Koreans or Korean culture? So please go to menti.com and Vasco would put the link, the direct link to menti poll, menti poll on the chat box. And in the meantime, I, I'm going to stop sharing my slide and go to my menti to show the result. Yes, I have just uh, added the, the link directly on the chat box. So please feel free to enter and, uh, and answer the question. Uh, there and also also take the opportunity to uh, ask all the participants to ask their questions uh, in the Q and A section, um, and um, and we will answer the questions uh, after the presentation. Soju, <laughs> you must you must been drinking soju, and I know that it's available in Korean market in Europe as well. High tech skincare. Yeah, I think there must be, you know, people from, you know, cosmetics industry a lot in this audience. Food, digitally connected, educated, hunger. I think, you know, that I see some advanced Korean knowledge and BTS, you must, you must be following them and you must be one of those armies for BTS. But I think overall, yeah, I think we know that I saw we have more than 30 people, you know, participating in this webinar and 16 submitted your response. Hwesik, I even see some Korean. Wow, what a surprise. Hwesik means actually, you know, app, you know, you know, social gathering, you know, usually, you know, having a meal together after work. So this one, Korean, Korean word is called Hwesik and this is, you know, that after work social gathering. So I'm going to actually wait until the number reached, you know, at least 20 and then close this poll. So I think the biggest keywords that I'm seeing is skincare. Yes, I think K-beauty, you know, rocks the Asia, at least Asian market at this moment and innovation. Wow, I think, you know, that your understanding of Korean, Korea or Korean culture is very advanced. K-pop, drama, educated, good food, Manhwa, so it means actually cartoon. Future thinking, Korean BBQ, yum, yummy, yummy, yeah. <laughs> Biotech, trend. I don't know what this means, rigorosity. Yeah, I will look it up in the dictionary after this. So one more response and I'm going to close the poll. So please don't be shy. Even you know, if you don't know, you know anything about Korea, just you know that you can put down I don't know anything about Korea. <laughs> oh yeah, voila, you know, that now we reached the, you know, the numbers 20 and not much different, strong economy, Confucianism, technology and educated. I thank you. Thank you all for sharing, you know, that uh, your impression of Korea. And I think, you know, that this group is much more advanced and much and has much more latest knowledge of Korean, Korea or Korean culture. So I think, you know, that then I'm going to focus more on what is, what is going on in Korea at this moment. So I think, you know, that this is about dynamic Korea and this picture is taken from a Buddhist temple just right next to the busiest business, uh, one of the busiest business area in Korea. And I think since, you know, that many of you are from, you know, cosmetics industry, this building, L'Oreal Korea headquarters is located in this building. And this is actually one of the hardest, you know, the business hub in Korea. 
you know, in, 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 the, in the south, southern part of Seoul. And this is what I'm going to talking about, how Korea is changing from traditional to modern. And so, you know, you will hear a lot of contrast or the, sometimes actually even paradox. So, uh, I want to introduce the, the Hofstede model quickly, you know, that I'm not going to spend too much time on Hofstede mo model, uh, because if I start to talk about this model, I think it will take at least a day. But, you know, the, the reason I introduced this model is that because this model it pro will provide you very solid basic foundation to build upon your intercultural competence. The model created by Professor Herbert Her Hofstede, if I speak his Dutch name correctly, he passed away you know, just a few years ago, and he created this, you know, the model of intercultural you know, the, the management, which is the summary of, you know, the differences that makes the biggest difference when people, you know, from different cultures work together. So if I, you know, you know, provide you a quick snapshot of the model in a plain English. The first dimension is called the power distance index. This is about how people relate with power. And I think in simple English, you know, that it can be either hierarchical or egalitarian culture. And the second dimension is about the individualism and collectivism for, I think, you know, Many of you are familiar with the terms, but there's actually more than the, you know, the just the group oriented, because this is about people's direction of loyalty, whether they are you know, more loyal to themselves or more loyal to the group they think they belong to. So that's about the, you know, the individualism and collectivism. And the third dimension is about the motivation, whether the culture, culture focus is more on achievement versus, you know, quality of life like Nordic cultures. And the fourth dimension is very humane dimension. This is about the people's need for structure, need for predictability. So some culture need more structure, more predictability, so they care more about the structure versus some other cultures are more about just to do it. It's more about the risk-taking culture. And model is model started from the actually four dimensions, but you know that if it is about the east-west interaction, I love to add you know the fifth dimension, which is about the you know you know the pragmatic long long-term orientation versus nomadic short-term orientation. So that's about east-west. So you know that if you are interested in getting to know more about the model, or if you want to build really strong foundation of intercultural management, please check out Hofstede Insights, you know, website because they provide you, you know, that this basic, you know, the, the webinars always. And the reason I introduced this model is that if I use the model and the, you know, the transitions of the, you know, the dimension by dimension it actually provides a nice snapshot of the, you know, how Korean cultural landscape is changing. So the, the blue bar is from the data from the 1980s and the yellow, you know, it was red on my screen, but I think it looks like orangey-ish. The orange bar is more from the, you know, that uh, the, the captures from, you know, my survey with working with Koreans in up to, you know, the 2016. So as you can see, power distance is going down. So that means Koreans are le getting less hierarchical, becoming more individualized. And as a society, you know, that we are, we are putting more focus on achievement and getting less, you know, that uh, and having a less need for structure or predictivity. And our long-term orientation is, you know, that getting more of the short-term orientation. So this is the quick snapshot, snapshot of how Korean culture is changing. But let me actually translate every everything that I you know everything I captured in this model into more of the you know the common English. So I think you know that to me culture is very interesting. It is living organism, and it is basically about the, your 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 strategy for success accumulated from your life experiences in a given given environment. So we have to understand what makes Korea, what makes Korea Korea or what makes Koreans Korean. So there are conditions. So if you've been to Korea, probably you notice that this is very homogeneous country. So we have 50 million on Korean Peninsula and 95% of the populations are Korean. So there are only 5% of you know, the foreigners there. 
So, I mean, this is very homogeneous country in a very congested land. So I think Korea is about a third size of Spain, but we have similar population. So that's how dense we are. And, and what makes actually Korea very different you know, that from you know, many different other you know, countries, especially in Europe is that we went through super high speed intensive economic development in the last 60, 70 years. So in 1953, when, you know, the Korean War was over. Korea was one of the poorest country and quickly moved into a developing country. And actually last week, Korea's status was upgraded from a developing country to a developed country by the United Nations you know, Conference on Trade and Development, you know, UN UNCTAD, UNCTAD. And it is the first time the UN body upgraded a country's classification from developing to the developed since its establishment in the 1964. So that's what makes Koreans really proud of our achievement. And that's how we crazily you know, just, you know, they're headed up for the, you know, they're developing our countries. And with these conditions, you know, what happened in Korean mindset or Korean -like cultural landscape is that the, you know, the first of all, you know, that uh, less getting less hierarchical, I call it Korean leveling. And that the next to uniformity and centralization is about the dynamics from collectivistic, very collectivistic culture to individualistic culture. And the extremity and urgency is, you know, that the intense experience that you can only get in Korea. So some people love Korea because it's intense, fun, dynamic, thrilling. So, you know, some people, you know, they think it's, you know, that uh, it's fun, heaven. But for some, if you if you like more slow or if you love, you know, peace and quiet, maybe, you know, the Korea may be a little bit, you know, you know, getting tough on you. But all, all of this actually made Korea very dynamic. So let's actually get to the, you know, the Korean leveling first. So this is the picture I took from a Confucianism Academia, which is located in the southern part of Korea. And, and this was built in 16th century. And the reason I captured this picture is that when I was there, I thought it was interesting that these two buildings have a different flooring. The thickness of flow is quite different. And it was very obvious, not because Korean architecture at that time was less skilled, but because there was you know, the deep philosophical reason behind that. So this is, you know, the Korean, you know, Confucianism Academy at that time was a boarding system. So everybody stayed there. And this building here on the right side is teacher's lodging. And this building on the left side is a student's, student's you know, dormitory. And this is actually architecturally embedded, you know, ideology that even when they sleep, students were not supposed to sleep higher than the, you know, the teachers. So this was how Korea was serious about the, you know, that embedding Confucianism into everyday life. But this is 16th century. Moving fast forward in 2016, there was candlelight vigil for the impeachment of then president, you know, that uh, Ms. Park geun -hye. And this impeachment was a victory for many South Koreans who took the street for six weeks in massive street rallies to demand her resignation. And it was actually peaceful transfer of the power because I think, you know, for those six weeks, there was not any single report of physical violence on the street. Millions and millions of Koreans were there, you know, requesting for the resignation of the, you know, the, the president, the problem, problematic you know, president, you know, weed embezzlement or and some, some of the different scandals, but it, you know, happened in a very peaceful way. And this is actually what many Koreans feel very proud of. And also, you know, that the, you know, according to the, the Economist the Democratic Democracy Index 2020, Korea was one of the, you know, that uh, 2023 countries that were categorized as full democracy. But this is actually mega narrative on the more on the political side. And if I actually, you know, that when we get down to the everyday life, there is a famous saying in Korea that you have a rumble in your stomach if your cousin buys a land. So if your cousin buys land and accumulates actually more property, that's something to congratulate for. But why do you have a stomachache? 
I think you know that if you just interpret this as you know green with the MB, oh they are jealous or, or just keeping up with the Jones, it's one side of the story. The other side of the story is that actually this is actually you know that a good evidence of Korean strong achievement orientation. Koreans are very conscious of their standings in the group, and they are not going to take they are not going to take anything less compared to the groups you know, that around them. So you know, as a society, there are a lot of voices you know, asking for fairness and justice. But if it gets down to you know, consumer, you know, that, uh, consumer territory, you are going to have super demanding customers. And what makes Korean companies successful? I think half of them are actually from this because they have very tough customers to please domestically. So, and, and that makes Korea as a great test bed market. Definitely, you know, if you want to expand into the Asian market, Korea, you know, if you just, you know, look for the Korean market as a, as a market, it's not that attractive, you know, we have a you know, small population. So, I mean, it's not, maybe, you know, that you are missing a lot, but I mean, through Korean, you can really expand into the Asian market, if not to the global market. And which I'm going to actually explain, you know, a little bit, you know, later as well. And you know, there's just you know, the one more tip, you know, related with the Korean changing hierarchical, you know, the landscape is that yes, we are getting less hierarchical, but it may be still safer if you stay on the more former side. I understand that sometimes actually Koreans come across as more hierarchical because we are more formal. And it, in 2013, Mr. Bill Gates you know, visited Korea and he had this very casual one hand, you know, one hand handshake with the other tucked in the pocket with the, our president at that time. And he was attacked by Korean, Korean media and Korean people. Oh, you know, he was so rude, you know, the, how he could be so culturally insensitive. He did not pay due respect to our president. So he got bombarded by, you know, that uh, Korean mass media. And six months later, Mr. Larry Page from the Google visited Korea. He learned the lesson from Ms., you know, Mr. Bill Gates. So he did very polite two hand shake with a slight bow and Koreans praised him like, oh, you know, that he is very polite, you know, that he knows, you know, the, how, to, how to do business in different cultures. So this is actually one example that, you know, that it's, you know, the safer if you are on the board on the former side. So let's move into the next, you know, that uh, aspect of how Koreans are changing from the very collectivistic to individualistic culture. Being a collectivistic culture is not that bad, I would say, if you are running the company. Because you know, this is actually from the research from the one Korean university asking, how much are you willing to sacrifice their interest, interest for the benefit of the company? And more than half of the Koreans actually said, yes, yes, I'm going to sacrifice my interest if it is actually helping the companies to thrive. And this actually was the, you know, the booster that made the Koreans, Korean companies, you know, can grow so fast in the in the last you know 50, 60 years. But things are changing. But I think you know that the one thing important to hear is that Koreans, you know, will be very loyal and they go extra, extra miles if you build the sense of group. Because as I you know emphasized before, collect, you know, Koreans are not just loyal to any group, Koreans are loyal to the group. The, the only group they think they belong to. So that's why it is very important to build a good relationship and also you know, the good trusting relationship with Koreans. And this is not a scientific research and this is not the prescriptions that I'm suggesting that you must do this in Korea, but this is actually the, in the collections from the, you know, the workshop discussion. So this is what Koreans say, number one, eat together, drink together. Of course, this is pre-COVID area, you know, pre-COVID, you know, that area, era, and doing sports together and keep regular contact. So, I mean, you can go, go, go through the list. And I think the basic point here is that be, be there with them together and do something together with them. So if you want to do business, you know, with Koreans, you may want to actually compromise your sense of space. So this is what Koreans say, what's helpful. And I'm going to, you know, and the, you know, that QBIN will going to lead the presentation slide to the participants. So you can go through the list later. 
And this is what actually foreigner says about how to thrive in Korea. And many of them are common sense, but you know that, uh, let me just explain two points. Give all the credits to Koreans. It's not because Koreans love to take, you know, their credits, you know, the, from the foreigners, but I, this is what foreigners do to Koreans, right? So if you were the main driver for some achievement and success, all Koreans know. So they are already, you know, applauding you and praising you. But, you know, when people actually applauding you for the, you know, that great success, and if you say, oh, no, 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 because, you know, it's, it's because all, you know, that all thanks to you, Koreans, you worked hard, you know, you gave some, you know, that encouragement, da, 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 da. you get the bonus point from Koreans. First, you, know, you are the, you know, the driver for the success. And in addition, you are very modest. So that's the time that Koreans fell in love with you. And the last point, you know, I saw a lot of Korean food from the, you know, that, uh, the menti.com. Koreans, Koreans are so proud of their Korean food and they love, they are so foodie. And I am very foodie. So eat Korean food, better yet, we the Koreans, better yet, Tell Koreans you love Korean food. Then I think Koreans will really, really love you. So, but I think, you know, that this is about actually, you know, that uh, the, you know, moving into more individualistic society. And I think it depends on the actual generation by generation. And the watershed of generation differentiation is, we call it X generation, the generation who were born in the 80s. So somebody who were born before the 80s, they are mostly traditional. Of course, um, there's individual variation, variation depending on their life experiences, but mostly, you know, if they are over 50 or, you know, 45 or you know, beyond, beyond that, I think, you know, the, you can assume more of the traditional approach, but X generation was the first generation who was strongly encouraged to be unique, to display individuality. And it goes, it goes on more and more if it gets down to millenniums or the G generations. But the interesting, you know, the pro marketing perspective is that according to a research released by Korean conglomerates, you know, recently, if you are targeting millenniums or jet generation, actually you surprisingly found many of the X generations in your customer group. Because, you know, the Koreans actually, you know, look, looking for something younger than them, something that makes feel younger than, you know, their real age or something like that. So sometimes actually, you know, yes, you are targeting your, your customer group, but you may attract actually some of the, you know, more wider, you know, that uh, the, the consumer groups. And the other interesting thing, you know, that I noticed, you know, from the news articles these days is that one of the actually mega hit items among the 20s and 30s in Korea these days are actually shampoo that prevents hair loss. So usually hair loss, hair loss we were starting to worry about the 50s. So, I mean, it's not because Korean 20s and 30s are suffering from hair loss, but because they think it's investment for future. And, and they actually, you know, they buy hair loss shampoo for the, you know, the sense of well-being. So you will never know what to get in Korea. So it's a little bit of the mixture message, but I think, you know, that, you know, that you will get the message, you know, the right message for your, you know, the target customers. And this is actually fun part, extremity and urgency. So this is, you know, that all about intense Korean experience and which makes Korean, Korean experience really dynamic. And, you know, I think, let me start from the Korean emotional landscape, Korean emotional sentiment. Probably 10 to 15 years ago, if you ask what's the typical, what's the most representative Korean emotional sentiments, many people would say Han. So the rough English translation is really pent up intense sorrow, remorse, bitterness, resentment, because we went through a lot historically. So I think, you know, that if there is an analogy that we make, you know, that we, the European countries, I mean, we probably, you know, that uh, more resonate with Irish cultures or the Polish cultures, because they went, we think they went through a lot as well. But I think that was, you know, 10 years or 15 years ago, but, but these days, that more representative Korean emotional sentiment is called the hum. So this is explosive excitement, fun, merriment group. And I think you know that uh, that's in our that's in our Korean DNA or Korean gene. Because if we look at Korean Chinese traditional literature, they describe the Koreans as an Eastern tribe because we located in the eastern part of China, an Eastern tribe who loves drinking, singing, and dancing. 
So my actually personal opinion is that Han is the creation of the colonization, but I think you know, that's okay. I think you know, that's another you know, the intense you know, feeling. But Hung is actually more about the, you know, the, uh, what, what represents actually Korean emotional sentiment this day, which is well represented in the booming K entertainment industry. Korean entertainment was very small you know, that, uh, before 2000. And I think you know, that the K entertainment industry started from the one Korean drama called you know, Huyuno Sonata in Japanese, or Winter Sonata, which was a mega hit in Korea in 2002, and you know that and and you know left a button to the Dejangum, which is about the you know the medical chef in the palace, and which was a big hit in the you know the Chinese speaking you know the countries. And I was expect expect myself in Shanghai, you know the you know in in some point in time, and there was a time that one Korean drama was you know just sweeping the whole Chinese, you know, that, you know, household. And, you know, if I introduce myself as friends, people are like, oh, you, you are Korean. You must watch like the Sing Sing the Knee, the, uh, the level from the stars or something like that. And I, you know, I don't watch Korean drama, but, you know, the, to keep the conversation going with them, I need to watch those dramas. And I recently, you know, that had a new colleague from the, you know, Sweden. And what she said was, I'm a big fan of Korean drama. So it's actually getting more expanded globally. And, and not just Korean drama, Korean K movies, Parasite and Minari, but you know that we cannot, you know, we cannot skip K-pop if you speak about the K entertainment. The officially the biggest boy band in the world and the biggest girl band in the world, they both are actually from Korea, BTS and Blackpink. So they are big, huge industry. I mean, you know, they, they are just, you know, that big industry and not just big in terms of income and the fan base, but I think, you know, that uh, for somebody like me, it's always confusing, you know, to identify who's who, you know, the, from the this band. So this is a band called the NCT and the number of members in this one boy band is 23. So they have 23 band, 20, 23 members in one band. Then how can you tell who's who? But fans, they know, and if you actually in the Korean subway station, you know, on every column, you know, that, you know, that Korean, you know, that K-pop bands fans are paying to put their idols birthday message on those, you know, the columns, which is big industry as well. But I think the other thing about, you know, that uh, related with K industry is that Koreans are really into looks. It is very appearance, appearance conscious society. So if you are actually targeting Korean, you know, Korean, Korean market as for your cosmetics, yes, I mean, it is the very right market, but you have to be very nimble and very smart and very innovative because, you know, the Koreans are good at making an innovative product based on the needs or creating the needs. The famous 10-step Korean skin, skin routine or BB cream, CC cream, you know, the cushion and all those Korean masks and snail creams. So I think, you know, the Koreans are good at innovation. And so, or, or actually, you know, that, uh, you know, so I think, you know, that if you think about the Korea, that's not actually the country that comes to your mind, you know, related with innovation. I was surprised to see innovation on the menti.com, but actually Korea is very innovative. And Korea was actually number one in the, you know, the Bloomberg, you know, innovative index. So I think, you know, this was actually also shown in the, you know, COVID innovations and the drive-through, you know, the testings and all those apps for the mask and, you know, residual vaccines. And this syringe is the very special syringe. So it is so-called the low data space syringe to increase the number of vaccine recipients by one, one to two per vaccine batter. So this is actually squeezing to the last drop of the vaccine from the butter to maximize the number of jabs. So that's about the, you know, that uh, the Korean, you know, so some of the, you know, but, but, but some of the actually Korean complex is that, yes, we are good at innovation, but we never actually made, you know, breakthrough innovation. That's what makes, that's what 
keeps Koreans, you know, then more innovative. Because yes, we got the Oscar, we got the billboard, but we you know we never got the, you know that Nobel Prize. So that's our next target. And if we are really interested in what's happening in real time in Korea, so I would recommend the Consumer Trend Insights. It it, it is released in, in the beginning of every year, and they have English version as well. Okay, so Alex, I think uh, Alex, sorry, this is Vasco. Just to to give you some heads up. Um, I think that probably in, a, in two or three minutes, we should in the meantime, move on to the yes. next presentation. So we sure, would sure. appreciate in the meantime, uh, just to uh, make just a final summary or, 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 uh, or more towards the end of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, okay, moving to moving to summary. So I put some keys for your interest and for your to, to, de to develop your intelligence. So you know the please check it out, please check it out on the on the slides in release the later. And you know I'm, I'm not going to give prescriptions of what to do in Korea. So I'm, you know, I'm going to give actually more broader approach to you know what will make you successful interculturally. So when you feel frustrated, you know is, you know if you feel angry or if you feel something is trends, that's the time you pause and reflect and choose, oh, what makes Koreans behave that way? What makes Korean communicate that way? That way. So I think this is actually a great moment to ask questions to Koreans because that will show your interest about Korean culture and that will show your desire to understand Korean culture and which is a great way to build relationships with Koreans. So explore meanings behind together with Koreans so, and, and always, you know, they start with the cultural humility, you know, with the learning approach. That's the time you get the best of all worlds. Thank you all. I wish you all the success and all the fun working with Koreans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, just a wonderful presentation and full of content. Uh, and apologies also for the time constraints, but nevertheless, the presentations will be shared. Um, in the end uh, of the session. So all the, the useful information that we had, uh, which also wasn't possible to share it uh, for, for a bit longer, uh, this will be available for the participants. But thank you very much. Uh, I, I believe it was extremely useful for our, um, for our participants. And as far as I can see, the feedback is, is, uh, is being very positive as well. Um, so without further ado, I would like to move on to, to Sylvain uh, for his presentation. Um, so please go ahead, Sylvain. Thank you. Thank you, Vasco. Um, okay, thank you, Alex. I think it was a very rich uh, presentation with lots of insights. Uh, I will surely go back to some of the things you mentioned about uh, the Korean consumers, Korean market, because I think indeed, uh, all of my presentation, it will, it will be much more oriented on, on business. Uh, many aspects of uh, the culture and culture aspects of, of Korea that you mentioned uh, are relevant uh, to build success in uh, in Korea. Um, just a few words about Martiderm. Uh, for those of you who don't know the company, we are a family-owned uh, Spanish laboratory uh, working in uh, dermo cosmetics and uh, more specifically into master formulas and uh, specialized in what we want to call smart aging rather than anti-aging. Anti-aging is being against uh, uh, the age. Uh, we don't want to be against uh, aging. We just want to accompany the passing of years. This is what uh, what our philosophy is about. Uh, that's just a, a quick word about uh, about the laboratory. Um, but but more importantly, uh, and I'm sorry for stating the obvious, uh, but uh, about doing business in Korea, I think it we have to go back to uh, this is about doing business with Koreans. And, and there comes many of the points that Alex has mentioned about the cultural ways of working in, in Korea. Uh, and I think one of the key elements that has allowed for us to build a success in Korea has been uh, some humility from the start to say, we need to work with Koreans rather than, than uh, embark into uh, Korean market. Uh, and, and this has been key because uh, Alex, maybe you didn't mention this point, but uh, the first obstacle is language. Uh, many people don't speak excellent English, uh, and the first obstacle is, is English. Uh, and, and then, obviously, comes the understanding of the cultural uh, barriers, understanding of the challenges of, uh, of the uh, Korean market, 
And, and I think one of the key elements of, of us building a, a business in Korea has been really uh, working with Koreans, apart from the pleasure uh, uh, of working with Koreans, uh, um, it's about efficiency of, of doing business there. Um, one of the, uh, trying to, to also summarize uh, how we have built uh, our business in Korea, uh, I wanted to underline here uh, the, the fact that uh, we have had a very gradual approach into the, the Korean market. Um, and it started back in 2015, where uh, I would say our, our CEO and, and uh, our daughter of the founder of the company uh, had the vision to say, okay, we, we need to build business outside, uh, outside Spain. And, and Korea, with, with, uh, and I think it came out in the survey you did quickly, Alex, and all the, the things you mentioned about K-beauty and, and the demanding consumers in Korea, uh, Korea seemed to be a very great market to start expanding into Asia. Uh, so that was the start of the vision, but we needed to transform this into, you know, how, how we put it into action. And the way we did it uh, was uh, having uh, the luck to, to build uh, an opportunity opportunistic recruitment of, uh, of somebody studying here in Barcelona, who's still with us and is our area manager for Korea, he's a Korean guy, uh, and, and he's, he has been fundamental in, in building this uh, you know, ambition into, into a Korean market. Uh, after having cut in on this person, the second step was obviously uh, finding a strategic partner uh, who uh, would be able to represent the brand perfectly and be completely committed to, to uh, our Martyrdom brand. And this was the second step we did in 2016. And obviously the challenge then was only starting because uh, the the products that our main products are our, our key product are glass ampoules. Okay, we, we have uh, highly active vitamin C uh, smart aging ampoules that we wanted to introduce into Korea. It was a completely new concept. Korea is uh, full with innovations, but uh, importing uh, glass samples into the market was, was the first challenge. So uh, I will go a little, little bit more about how we did this, but that, what was uh, the step we built in 2016-17. And then the, the, uh, from 17 to now, uh, one of the key learnings for us has been the, the learning by doing uh, on everything, basically on products, but also on, on channel uh, management and channel choices. Um, and obviously, this is uh, something I will I will go back and explain a little bit more because Korea is a very rich market in cosmetics. There are lots of possibilities to enter, lots of ways to enter. And I will, of course, not say that ours has been the best way. It has been one of the ways that uh, we have uh, tackled the, the Korean market. But there are other other ways, of course, to to enter. Um, but this this has been really an important step of how we have built uh, this uh, this market. As I said before, working with Koreans, uh, here I, I just wanted to share uh, little uh, images of of how uh, committed our partner uh, Marion B uh, has been with the Martin brand. Uh, if you go there, you have the impression that you enter into Martin offices. Um, when uh, uh, they are obviously our distributor, but that they consider themselves and we consider themselves of, of part being part of Martyrdom. And uh, I think also in Korea, this is very much something that, uh, that works, uh, you know, uh, about the, the building the success together. Um, and, and that speaks to the, the Korean mind for sure. Um, and, and coming back a little bit more about the business model, I wanted to say that how, how we tackle this, basically was, uh, we had no experience in Asia at that time. I'm talking 2016, uh, there was a will to expand, but there was no knowledge. Uh, there was a great product. We, we have, uh, you know, we believe we have a great, and we believe that at that time we had a great product to introduce into the market, but it was new. Uh, it meant a lot of risk, it meant some investment. And, and of course, at that time, uh, we're Spanish laboratory. Most of the expansion at that time was in Europe. And the way we looked at the market and, and um, the, the great uh, point at that time was to say, okay, pharmacies in, in Korea, they are you know, meant to buy uh, drugs or, or, or medications. So it's not really 
the market uh, or the channel we have to tackle. And that's, that's how we, we developed uh, you know, into new models with uh, the help of a distributor. We had, uh, this distributor had experience in, uh, in dermal cosmetics with the French plant before. Um, focus, that's really key. Uh, no other brands really working with us uh, uh, on building the success in, uh, in uh, Korea. Brave and crazy enough to launch glass samples. You can imagine all the regulatory uh, difficulties that we had to face to register this product, etc., uh, etc. Et the commercial risk as well. Uh, so having a partner ready to be able uh, unable to invest uh, into the market, uh, assuming some difficult hurdles, and ready to invest also into changing the way to enter the market with new sales channels. So, you know, summarizing, I think there was a lot of trust on both sides to say, okay, uh, on our side, uh, we don't know the market but we are ready to, to do different things or to do things differently. And from the distributor to you know, uh, trust the fact that we had a unique product and that the effort was, uh, was worth you know, at the initial stage. So what we did was uh, first starting with uh, what seemed obvious at the time, we needed to build a showcase where we wanted to you know, develop into a global brand. Uh, our motto is, is to be a medical premium brand so we said, OK, we need to have a channel that can uh, build uh, uh, visibility and can build uh, an image uh, for the brand internationally. So that's where we came about the, the duty free as, uh, you know, Lotte and, and Sheila being the obvious uh, duty free channels to build the brand. Very qualitative uh, visibility point of sale uh, online and offline and focusing on, on our key uh, seller, which was the, the ampoule. Of course, at that time, we started to have an e-commerce. We started to have uh, to sell in e-commerce platforms, but I will come back to this later. This was not the main channel. Uh, and at that time, we really focused on, uh, on the duty-free. Um, then came something very specific. And, and that's, again, I don't know if it's linked to K-pop and, and all the rest of the things you mentioned, Alex, but, but there, there are specificities and, and phenomenon of uh, home shopping in, in Korea. Uh, in Europe, of course, home shopping has not a great image, uh, and, and it took us, you know, some adaptations also to, because many brands refused at that time to do uh, home shopping, uh, too complex, uh, not sure about this channel, uh, very difficult to launch, etc., uh, and very long. Uh, but we, we said, okay, let's let's try this. Uh, it was a great step on both sides. Uh, it took a lot of efforts, uh, but. We actually, and, and here we have the image of uh, our CEO, Monte Marti, uh, launching into the, the home shopping channels. So that was an exciting time uh, in September 2017. And in fact, it has been for us really a great sales driver. Sales driver, image driver, uh, that was an innovative uh, way to, to, to do things that in fact we do in uh, none of the other markets we have, uh, but, but really in Korea, uh, that's about the cultural adaptation, understanding the challenges of the market. Uh, and it, for us, it has been key. Um, and then the, the second uh, moment in, in that phase two, the second thing we did was, OK, we, we want to be a, a, a medical premium brand, so we need to address doctors. Uh, that seems obvious to us. So we went and, and, and into the medical channel, launched the Martyrdom brand. But quickly we realized uh, it was not exclusive enough. If you sell on home shopping, if you sell on online, then you know the speech to the doctors was not so powerful. Um, and that's an interesting case of, of uh, what we call reverse innovation because uh, from Korea started a project where we said, okay, we need to launch a specific medical brand addressing the doctors, different products, uh, different kind of offerings. Uh, to really address the doctors. And, and that's where we started to, to work on a brand that uh, later was called BMED, uh, the expert formula for, for doctors, and that we launched in Korea, but we also launched in Spain. So in fact, through Korea, uh, we progressed in, and launched a, a brand that actually now is selling more in Spain than, than in Korea. Um, and this was really, um, I think also you, you mentioned about the demanding consumers. Uh, demanding market, demanding consumers that forces you and pushes you to innovate 
in areas that maybe you did not anticipate when you entered into the market. And I think, as, as Alex said, uh, if you are ready for Korea, you are ready for Asia. Uh, so, so I think it's it's a great market for 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 learning. Uh, another case that I mentioned here, but you mentioned the masks, Alex, as well. We 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 learned about the mask market through through Korea, and and in fact we, we also launched uh, uh, through through Korea Insights. Uh, but another uh, interesting one is is the easy opener for our port. In uh, at that time. You know, we, we opened in, in Europe, we were used to open the, the ampoules in the old ways. The, the consumers in, in Korea said, no, 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 this is glass product. We want something very sure, very safe uh, to open the, the ampoules. And that's also where we, we developed uh, an easy open for, for the ampoule through the insights of, of Korean consumers. So I think really that's an interesting part, part about the, the, the Korean market. Um, and then the, the, the phase three, I would say, is the current one, uh, is we have continued the, the home shopping. It's very powerful. But of course, with, with the COVID uh, pandemic came the boom of, of online shopping. And of course, we have benefited from this uh, uh, in Korea, partly because uh, the offline has decreased, but we have moved a lot into the e-commerce platform. So that's, that's something that you need to bear in mind. We don't know what's going to happen next year. Uh, but for sure, the e-commerce platforms have, have really boosted uh, Lazada and the rest, and, and it's something you, you need to bear in mind for the future, uh, basically. And, and that's it for me. Basically, I wanted to conclude a little bit uh, summarizing uh, how uh, we see the future. I, I think uh, product range diversification is, can be something, as I said, about learning uh, by doing. Uh, there are many other opportunities in the market. Target segmentation. Uh, um, young target doesn't need the same thing as, as a more mature uh, target, and, and that's something we, we need still to look at. Uh, there are still rooms to expand in new channels. I uh, didn't mention all the channels of cosmetics in, in Korea, but of course it's, it's very rich, so there are lots of ways to enter. Uh, what we want to do is, is basically build a, a Martin as, as representing the Spanish beauty in the market. There is K beauty, but there's also S beauty, Spanish beauty. And that's where we want to represent uh, uh, Spain as, as, uh, as uh, a key brand in the market of, of Korea. And, and of course, strong partnership in Korea. I think it has been a great experience. And, and I would say that, as I said before, Korea can be a global showcase uh, for your internal expansion, international expansion. Uh, it will push you to, to, to improve, but it will also give you visibility because of the, of the phenomenon of what beauty means in, uh, in Korea. Um, so I think you need to be open-minded open about how you approach the market, trusting uh, um, Korean uh, insights, Korean experts, and, and build uh, uh, this way great success in, in Korea. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvain. Thank you very much for, for the presentation uh, of Marty Derman and all the, the struggles and barriers and, uh, and the success of, of, entering, of entering this market. Um, I will just share my uh, my screen uh, quickly um, to just to, uh, as an end slide um, and before reading out a few a few of the questions. Um, so uh, once again, thank you very much for all the for all the speakers. I have here um, a few questions in the meantime, which uh, which Alex has already replied um, during the during the session. But I think that um, some of them are, are useful uh, to to Sylvain as well. Um, first of all, the, the, one of the most common questions is, yes, we will share the presentation. Siegel and has also referred this uh, during the session. We will share the presentations after with all the participants, and also the recording will be available um, in, uh, in both websites uh, from Cuban uh, and Cosmetic Clusters. Um, so uh, you can expect to have this uh, uh, very soon. Of course, stay tuned and follow our um, our um, contents to see uh, when this information is available. Um, in terms of, of direct questions to our speakers, um, I think one of the most training questions which we have across uh, all sectors and topics is how does how did COVID impact the Korean economy? Um, I have here the reply from Alex um, referring that um, it impacted uh, uh, quite a bit, but is recovering fast. Um, there was no real lockdown at any point, 
um, um, and one of the least COVID impacted economies uh, that, that she is aware of. Also, export is still booming. Um, I would also take the opportunity probably to ask the same question um, to Sylvain um, directly to, the, to its business. How directly did the, this, um, did the uh, COVID-19 impact um, your business in Korea? Well, I think, of course, uh, it has had an impact. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, as I kind of said in, in my presentation, the, the major impact has been the switch of channels rather than uh, a full sales decrease. Uh, you know, many of the offline business has gone uh, to online. Uh, uh, but overall, I think the, the economy and the, and, and the business has, has uh, suffered the same way as, as many other countries. But uh, it has been more transformation rather than a, a, a deep crisis. Okay, okay, good, good, perfect. And then uh, great to hear that also adapted to the, to the circumstances, of course, and this was, uh, was still possible to, to foster the, uh, the business. Um, I have one question. Uh, I will have one, one question for Alex, uh, one or two, and then uh, one or two for also for Sylvain. Um, uh, if I may, uh, Alex, I, I, I was also quite interested uh, in one of the in one of the slides of the advice to the foreigners uh, when doing business uh, with South Korea. Um, the list was quite um, quite extensive and very useful. Um, but to, would it be possible to, in your opinion, highlight um, the top two or three? Um, advice that you would give uh, to someone who is now entering uh, the South Korean market uh, and that you consider uh, completely cr crucial and essential uh, to make sure that um, that this is followed. Um, not sure if it's uh, complementing the South Korean food, but uh, but which one from that list uh, which you consider the most uh, the most relevant? I think you know it depends on you know. What's your business in Korea? So if you are running a subsidiary, I mean, this is really, you know, I think, you know, that uh, the foreign nationals who created these responses are mostly working for global companies, being an expert in a, you know, in a, in a soul representing global companies. So they are more on the leadership position. So I think that's, you know, Sorry that you know I didn't you know really give the full context of that. So maybe mm -hmm. you know that this may be actually relevant to Sylvine. So if you are running Korean companies, so you have to show you can work hard too. But this is actually depending on a little bit generation by generation because work-life balance is getting you know a lot of attention, especially you know the younger generations. But I think you know that uh, if I give you like a one or two you know uh, advice. The first you know, one is that understand the cultural barriers because Koreans are very hospitable and very understandable to foreigners, but just one mistake will really you know, they make everything fall apart. So I think in this sense, you know, please you know, have a cultural informant. So have you know, the, your Korean cultural informant, that is you know, the one thing. And the second one is actually be involved in good causes. So I think that'll be a great, you know, that uh, you know, PR for your company and for your product. And also I think, you know, that they can build the brand in Korea. And, but more important thing is that build the trusting relationships with Koreans. Then they will go extra, extra months. Okay, great, great. Uh, um, thank you for your, for your insight and, and for highlighting what you would say would be the key the key factors. Um, I have one additional question for Alex here, uh, and then I will move then to, to Sylvain if, if this is okay. Um, you mentioned, uh, Alex, that uh, Korea is quite an homogeneous country. Um, would you say in your opinion that Koreans are open uh, for foreigners and foreign companies in general? I mean, it is a reality. I mean, I mean, you know, one, actually two other conditions that makes Koreans Korean is that, you know, extreme globalization after the 1980s. And also, you know, that uh, IT technologies, because, you know, that probably many of you know, would know if you've been to Korea, I mean, this is a highly wired country with, you know, that a lot of, you know, that IT products. So I think, you know, people are in general very open for the, you know, that uh, the foreign products and foreign companies, as long as they add value to us. Because I think that's actually what makes Korean market as a very competitive. 
because I think you know that uh, it's it's hard to wow Korean customers some in some way, especially I think in cosmetics market. I put down that you know L'Oreal's global L'Oreal L'Oreal's actually you know innovation center is located in Seoul, not in France, because I think you know that this is actually the fastest trend. You know, especially I think in cosmetics, this is actually one of the fastest moving market. So I think you have to be very clear about the, your value proposition to Korean consumers and Korean market. And also I think, you know, that Sylvain, you know, that come up with great insights about, you know, that uh, selection of the channel. Because I mean, if you want to actually, you know, that uh, brand your, your products in a high, you know, high end market, pick the, you know, that uh, prestigious channel, and, you know, that although, you know, the Sylvain said that there is no drugstore, there's actually Korean style cosmetics drugstore, which is all invasive called Olive Young. That is actually, you know, the, for the mass channel. And they are pretty much the dominator of the, you know, the Korean, Korean mass, you know, the cosmetics market. But I think in also, you know, once it's hard to please those, you know, that channels, because they are very, they can be very picky and they can be very demanding as well. So that's why another, that's another reason that you need some Korean connections. And, and in that sense, I really like to commend that, you know, you know, Sylvain's, you know, that the approach to Korean market. So it started from people. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for, for your, for your comment and reply. Um, I would move on now to, to Sylvain. I have a, a particular question regarding um, uh, your last slide was, was future and the next steps. Um, I, I was curious also um, when, you, when you referred um, that when entering the South Korean market, no significant experience, um, you didn't have any, no significant experience in Asia and South Korea. Um, does, uh, have in the meantime, uh, Martyrdom expanded to other Asian markets um, after South Korea, um, if yes, how does this compare with doing business uh, in South Korea? And if not, is there any plan to do uh, to do so in the uh, in near future or, or more in the long term? Oh, yeah, interesting question. Yes, yes. Smartidam now is is present uh, in uh, in more than forty countries. So in the last few years, we have expanded a lot. Um, and, and yes, we have expanded in the area. Um, I, I think, uh, as I said before, uh, Korea is, is demanding, but that uh, each market has its own channel. So uh, the way to approach market, I think that the, the main difference maybe with, with Korea is that uh, with, for example, the home shopping or even the duty free, uh, these are so powerful channels that, um, and Alex mentioned it, you really depend on, on how the negotiation goes, um, how uh, uh, picky they are, how the, your product is differentiated enough, etc. So maybe you create a dependency on, on just two or three customers, uh, but that in other countries in Asia, uh, except China, different market, but in other countries in Asia, maybe we, we have less dependency on these, uh, you know, very powerful channels. But yes, we have uh, in our uh, present in, in several countries in Asia, uh, more recently in Vietnam, building a completely different uh, strategy. Um, and and uh, I think Korea uh, has meant a lot to us in terms of giving us visibility in the area. And, uh, and, and as I said, learning a lot about uh, how to do market in, uh, in Asia. Okay, great, great to hear that uh, business is going well, as, as, as we usually say. Um, I don't have any, uh, any further question uh, at this point from the, from the audience. Um, I don't know if, uh, I mean, we're also reaching the end of the, of the session. Um, um, so I, I would probably um, ask just quickly the panelists, the speakers, if they would have any final notes um, as a final recommendation um, or, or important um, uh, information to share with um, with all the participants. I don't know, Alex, would you like to give just a final note and a, a closing remark from your side? No, I put down in a couple of ideas on the chat box. You know, leveraging SS, SNS influencers may be actually, you know, that uh, great approach to Koreans. 
and actually it's actually going beyond you know not just the famous celebrities because they are they are already too expensive but sometimes they are very influential you know the sns people the celebrities which has a lot of reach into asian market you know singapore southeast asia and they are not that expensive you know to my understanding so i think that's one way and the other thing is that it's all about how you change, you know, the crisis into opportunity. Probably you know that this Chinese character called the crisis. It means actually danger, but also opportunity. And cosmetics can be actually great revenge shopping item in COVID area. You know, because people cannot go abroad, they have a lot of resources to spend. They have money to spend and they are looking for you know, items to spend. That's why actually luxury items, luxury items in Korea is really, really in them. And all those high-end luxury market, they are having a great time in Korea right now. So I think, you know, that if you come up with the right product, with the right message, I think, you know, the Korean people will love, Korean people will just love your product and, and you are going to have a good time with Koreans and in Korea. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in the meantime, we just got uh, um, a question in. Um, I think that this would be more targeted to um, uh, to Alex. So I will probably move on to uh, to Sylvain for any uh, final final remarks and comments from your side. Uh, while Alex has a look at the, at the question that that we have in in the chat box, if if possible. No, nothing on my side. I, I, I just, I guess Alex can have a, a cultural response to the last uh, question, but I can have more of a business, but it's going to be, uh, I think, across all countries, it doesn't change. Five steps to start business in Korea. I think in any country, you have to, you know, find the right partner first, uh, then select the, the right uh, channel. Uh, and then, of course, uh, going into which products you want to, to convey and understanding the, the needs of the market, trying to have a, a unique product that brings differentiation. And then comes the communication and, and how you, you want to communicate about this market. But, you know, that's, that's a more of a business uh, answer. I'm sure Alex can have a, a more of a culture uh, answer to this. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Sylvain. Any, any further comments, Alex, on this? I totally, I cannot agree with, with I, I cannot agree with the Sylvain more. And that's, that corresponds with my cultural response as well. Perfect. So we are aligned in terms of culture and business, in business approach to, to, doing, um, to, uh, to doing business in, in Korea. Um, I, I am always uh, um, in, in a bad position when, when willing to also close the, the, the webinar and not having um, EU here, uh, I would say stuck for, for any longer, but uh, we also have just got um, an additional question here. Um, I think that this can um, more or less be targeted to both since, I mean, it's quite specific as well, but um, the question is, what do Koreans really value in education at the moment? What are the trends? Um, any of the speakers would like to, to comment this? Not exactly sure who I should address this to. I think you know that uh, Koreans value education a lot, and if you have a diploma from the prestigious you know school, I think people will like you more. But I also you know that uh, start to notice a trend in the, you know getting more pragmatic. So it's not about you know that uh, getting a big diploma, but also you know that uh, getting actually necessary diploma. But you know that in any sense, if you have a great diploma from the you know prestigious business school or the, you know, that the, the, the universities that Koreans know the name, then I think, you know, that people will respect you more. Koreans value, you know, high, high education. And the other thing is, is you know, that probably like almost 90% of Korean population has university degree. Yeah. So it's very pervasive. Yes, yes that, that's quite interesting actually. Um, okay, so um, I think that we are we are clear in terms of questions. Um, probably I gave the floor just to segue in any final uh, notes from your side uh, as also co-organizer uh, of the of the webinar before closing the session. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Vasco, for 
managing this webinar. And of course, uh, thanks a lot to Alex and Sylvain for this uh, uh, great feedback from Korea and sharing your experience as a company. It, it was important uh, to have this feedback. Thank you, Alex, for your knowledge about Korea. You're part of this country, but you're sharing a lot with all of us. So thank you very much for this moment. I think we, regarding the comments we had uh, directly on live, it was very, very good one. So, well, let's hope it played and, and seen by many people because it was very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Sigma. And of course, I share all my, uh, all my thoughts and, and opinion as well. Um, uh, that the, the feedback of the participants was great. And, and thank you very much for sharing all your, all your knowledge and experience uh, with the South Korean market. Uh, and we also hope that this was very relevant for uh, the cosmetic industry and for all of the, all of the stakeholders uh, within the global, um, um, global uh, cosmetics cluster. So from my side, thank you very much once again. Uh, we keep in touch. Uh, I also just give the note that any participants of this webinar which would like to reach us out, uh, I would, uh, and I think I can speak on behalf of both initiatives, uh, both Cuban and, and Cosmetics clusters, that in case we get any additional question, uh, we will make sure that uh, we will try to reach uh, the speaker for in order to get a, a more detailed reply. Um, and so feel free to, if there was any question that was not um, uh, there was no chance to, to ask you or it just came a bit later on the, after the webinar uh, happened, uh, feel free to get in touch with us. So thank you very much on behalf of, of Cuban, SPI and Hofstede as, as implementing partners um, and also Sigolin for, for all the participation and collaboration. Uh, last but not least, the speakers and the participants that make, uh, can, are, which is possible to make this happen. Thank you very much and have a nice rest of day and, and evening to all of you. Thank you very much.